The day was done, the battle was won, and we walked in a daze to Rishkin, our mad and proud city, saved that day by her children, humans and goblins. Grinning messengers had gone ahead, flying home with news of victory. Bold music journeyed back on the wind, our fair home gifted fair minstrelsy. Cheers and fires and most toothsome meats awaited us beyond Rishkin's walls. Great indeed would be the revelry. Too great, in truth. Much I can't recall. Yet as the soldiers all returned home, and our kith and kin emerged without, the first priority was the feast, for which cages and spits were brought out. The prisoners we'd taken that day, humans but nothing like Rishkin's breed, had come in search of plunder and slaves. This fact cured us of all empathy. We packed them in cages and raised them to swing and watched the rotating spits as their comrades were roasted on them, then were hacked and eaten, bit by bit. We are many, and we were very hungry. No meat would survive to see morning. Of course, this fair was just for goblins. We men must heed the healer's warnings. Ill it is that humans eat humans. We weren't made half so carnivorous as our goblin friends. Thus we but jeered as the meat men quivered above us. I wonder, in truth, if it's so wrong. As a boy, kindly old Crim Redarm would sometimes sneak me some fried fingers. And they never did me any harm. Anyway, after I was sated on succulent boar and vegetables, I turned to the wine and ale too, and the night's other well-earned revels. I woke up, half-naked, in a ditch, along with some seventeen others. Mosquitoes and hangovers plagued us. Curse it all. At least it was summer. The meat's bones were already taken, destined to be woven into walls or to adorn furniture, maybe. Perhaps to plug gaps in a guild hall. For my part, I quested for water and for coffee, and then for my pay. Rishkin's high council was not stingy to those who had fought their home to save.